This is Rin, and she got some devil wings but don't be fooled, she's an intern for the job of Master Slurpee Drinker. And on her first day, she received a sussy glowing red ball from her boss as a reward for having good grades. Now here's the thing, this isn't no ordinary marble, as this is actually her source of power to make sure she can deliver the goods during her sussy backup jobs as a master slurpee drinker trainee. Regardless, fast forward to her first target on the job, she's tasked to gank a Roblox player named Hojin as bro has been playing too much video games at night. As such, she sneaks inside his house by cosplaying Santa, and while using his skill called Ghost Walk Through the Wall, Rin is able to make it right before an unsuspecting and sleeping Hojin. However, after some time staring at Hojin, it finally dawns on her that she has no idea on what to do next, as she's literally level zero in this department, and it's still her first day. Now the only thing she knows is she needs to surprise Gank Hojin's banana tree plantation, which should allow her to steal his soul. And if done properly, she's able to successfully complete her first job. Nevertheless, with time ticking as night falls, Rin decides to hop on Mount Hojin to see if the roller coaster could get up and running, without her having to do much. Unfortunately for both of them, Mount Hojin is still fast asleep even with rice cakes right on top the banana tree plantation, as Bro is still busy dreaming about gaming like a savage. As such, Rin decides it's time to use some of her newfound powers as surely nothing could go wrong. So she whips out some red-looking dragon balls and places it near Hojin where it begins to glow. It's then revealed that Rin's plan is to make Hojin smell the scent of sussy strawberry from this mysterious red marble look alike as it should wake him up in no time. But just as she expected, our boy still continued to dream about video games, and instead, our boy's banana tree plantation started to have a growth spurt out of nowhere, which totally reversed Gang's Rin. Now the funny thing is that Hojin has started to look like he's dreaming about playing some dating sim games, and unbeknownst to him, the best female character is literally right in front of him. Anyways, as he dreams about getting to the final cutscene of his dating sim game, which allows him to whip out his dried mango sword, he does the exact same motions in real life, causing him to unknowingly reveal his volcano. Nonetheless, Rin starts to think her powers are actually working as our sleeping boy is ready for his mega adventure quest, so she decides to fully activate the legendary abilities of the mysterious marble. To do so, she starts channeling her inner demon princess skills, and as she does so with the marble in front of Hojin, a red aura begins to engulf her. As Rin continues to charge on forward with her magic marble abilities, our boy ends up waking up totally confused, and the first thing he sees as he opens his eyes is a cutie looking like she's perfectly from those very cool and great anime, where men's volcanoes explode thanks to her. But since Rin's target is now awake, she gets startled by his movement, causing her to drop the mysterious marble, allowing Hojin to accidentally eat Rin's overwhelming powers whole, just like some kind of double Big Mac. It was at this very moment she knew she screwed up, so both of them end up freezing like a bunch of Eskimos from up north in the land of the new American state called Canada. Regardless, Rin's mistake forces her to urge Hojin to run to the bathroom in an attempt to retrieve through some unconventional means to no avail. After a very long time and multiple tries in getting the alien marble out of his system, he decides to just leave the bathroom and accept his fate as there's no way he can retrieve it as he can only hope that maybe some Dairy Queen ice cream can help him as he's absolutely lactose. With the sad news finally arriving through Rin's head that he wasn't able to retrieve her powers, she begins to panic deep down as she can't believe she totally screwed up her first day on the job and her mistake was enormous, even larger than Hojin's banana tree. However, as things look bleak for Rin, Hojin pipes up like a true Chad and tells her that since she's a devil slurpy princess, she probably doesn't even need the marble to win over dude since he claims that her physical form is literally 69 out of 10. Unfortunately for Rin, she reveals to Hojin that even though she's a devil princess, she's still technically an intern, and she needs the marble to activate her powers until she's able to get promoted by completing her license. Hojin also discovers that not only is this her first ever assignment, but this is also her first time venturing out of her world, and her first time even seeing a man in real life. So now Rin stays on the ground and begins to slowly cry as she knows she can't go back to her world without the marble, and without her mission completed, so she's stuck in the human world. Luckily for her though, Hoja decides to help her out the best he can so he allows her to stay at his apartment while she figures things out. But for the meantime, he needs to head out to go to school. Fast forward a few moments later, our boy makes it to school and he starts thinking to himself that maybe he's going crazy as he can't fathom his experience with a devil princess literally an hour before. Nevertheless, as he continues on recollecting what just happened during the night, he heads to his first class, but he accidentally tries to open the door at the same time with the most popular girl at school, causing both their hands to make contact. 
The girl's name is Dayong, and she just happens to be every guy's crush at school, including his, so he instantly gets flustered and tries to apologize, but no words is able to come out of his mouth as his simp powers come out in full force. Eventually, she interrupts the awkwardness and tells our boy to stop spacing out, and for the first time ever, she ends up remembering his name and notices Hojin. Things then get more out of the ordinary for Hojin, as Dayong randomly asks our boy if he could help her after class to organize some things, so it seems like things are about to get more heated than the out of flames Miami heat. Then, as time passes by, no one else comes to class for some mysterious reason, leaving the two alone inside the classroom, but both of them start to get engulfed by a red aura. With the two already waiting over half an hour in class with no professor arriving, Hojin finally pipes up and kindly asks Dayong that she received any sudden announcements to why no one decided to come today. However, Dayong Misuna's twin sister from Sussy Art Online quickly changes her aloof demeanor as she gets ganked by our boy's question, so she is flustered out of nowhere just from Hojin talking to her. Luckily for her though, Hojin doesn't notice the difference in her usual behavior, so he tells her that he's going to leave and ask the department office to see what's going on. As such, our boy continues on his quest to find out what the heck is going on, but just as he's about to leave the room, Dayong's body randomly forces her to get up as her heart starts to race. Things then instantly go from 0 to 69 faster than my instant cup noodles, as Dayong is unable to get Hojin out of her mind, even entering the point of her no return as she finds out her secret catacombs have started to leak fresh coconut juice. She then decides to block Hojin's path out of the room, making sure he isn't able to easily leave as it looks like something has overtaken her mind. Mere seconds later, she jet dashes towards Hojin to make contact for her team, but her team failed her again as she's the only one to entry with no follow-up. Of course, our boy gets flustered as he's never imagined that his favorite streamer would ever notice him, nor would he have expected a girl take note of his measly Amazon Prime sub. Anyways, Hojin freezes in disbelief as he goes with the flow as Dayong decides to debuff his movement speed by totally unlocking his banana tree plantation as she's able to remove all stats from his armor pants by throwing them out to the side. Moments later, she starts devouring the crazy banana split she just uncovered within the room, but if you look closely, Dayong kind of looks like Taiga from Toradora from this angle, but she ain't that short as her. So now as Dayong starts having dessert before the main course, she continues to go more crazy than Messi signing up for Inter Miami as she's trying her best to make sure Volcano Hojin explodes. Speaking of Hojin, Bro just stands there like he's doing the mannequin challenge on maximum difficulty, where if he makes any move, he knows he will lose concentration and his science experiment of his untamed volcano will erupt all over. Eventually, the volcano explodes and Hojin's science experiment loses for the first time ever, but as he does so, he made sure Dayong finished up every drop of the special banana split flavored ice cream. Shortly after completion of her side quest, Dayong snaps back to reality and is totally confused to what the heck is going on as she finds herself by the ground while facing Hojin's freshly juiced banana trees out in the wild. As such, she swiftly gets up and starts yelling at our boy, ordering him to forget whatever just happened as she claims aliens have taken over her mind for that brief moment. But right before Hojin could reply back with anything, Dayong grabs all her belongings and speeds off into the sunset and out of the classroom faster than my gas, leaving our boy totally speechless. Regardless, Hojin heads back home after school still shocked that to this day he can't ever figure out why girls keep sending him mixed signals, especially if the girl is the one to make the first move. He then tries to shake it off as he attempts to convince himself that girls make sure you never know their next move, so maybe Dayong was just pulling off a just a prank bro moment. Anyways, after an eternity, our boy finally makes it home but now finds himself in dismay and angry that he almost got fooled into thinking Dayong could ever like him. Hojin then rushes off to his bedroom, but just as he was about ready to relieve all his stress through one simple trick, he stumbles upon Rin from last night as he totally forgot about her. However, as he stands over her wondering what to do, Rin notices his presence and wakes up and proceeds to throw him to the ground, where she pins him to ask if he's finally come to give over his soul to her. Mere seconds later, she channels her innocent princess self and proceeds to swap mouth water relentlessly causing Hojin to stop her in her tracks as he likes no more surprises. However, the turntables turn, as Rin instantly apologizes for doing the reckless show of emotion as she just realized something otherworldly has overtaken her senses at that brief moment, so she couldn't help herself but attack. Just as she finished apologizing, it finally dawned on her that whatever just happened to her is literally her own power, so she starts freaking out and asked our boy if something peculiar happened to him while he was out and about. As such, Hojin decides to reveal what happened to him earlier during the day, explaining in full detail what Dayong did to him while no one else showed up to his first class. 
After finishing up his story, Rin's theory is proved to be correct, so she tells Hojin that the mysterious marble is using his scent which could also lead to the marble taking over his body. With our boy acting totally aloof, Rin pipes up and sternly warns him that he basically stole her powers, so now he needs to watch his back as every girl in college will start to hunt him down, due to him being the only meat they want during unlimited Chinese hot pot. However, with Hojin trying to play off his earlier encounter with Daeyong slurping his ice cream as nothing, he tells Rin that nothing out of the usual happened to him today, but we all know bro ain't usually the wizard of Oz. Regardless, Rin can see through his charade and choose him out for not heeding her warning. Plus, she's still shocked that she can still feel the power of the marble affecting her. Rin then continues and informs him that if they don't find a way to retrieve the marble, then she won't be able to collect his soul, leading to her inevitable death that will cause ripples in the entire human and devil realms. So now, with only one option seemingly left for Rin, she ends up telling Hojin that it's unfortunate she needs to end the mess with him, causing our boy to get up defensively, wondering what she means. Our boy then finds out exactly what she meant mere seconds later, as Rin transforms into her menacingly devil form, sending Hojin flying straight into the underground of his floor. But right before Hojin turned into Baijin, Rin apologizes for having to do this, claiming that it's better for a single Roblox player to perish, rather than having the entire human realm facing ultimate disaster. Bro then tries to run away while Rin closes the gap, but his body is unable to move due to her powers, so Rin lets her Earth buddy know that she's going to make it quick for him. However, literally one second before Rin could personally activate her manual soul extraction skills, the two get interrupted by a Ding Dong ringing his doorbell. As such, Rin stops in her tracks as this was unexpected due to this guy never ever getting any visitors, so she orders him to go grab the door. She then warns Hojin that if Bro did anything sus or suspicious at all, then she will John Cena both him and whoever the person is at the door. But then, much to everyone's surprise including mine, the sussy turned tables instantly turn as the visitor happens to be none other than super popular Daeyoung. It's then revealed that Daeyoung never knew his address, but she lets her boy know that she was being stalker and successfully figured out his address all on her own. Anyways, that's not totally weird at all since she's a girl, but Daeyoung ends up asking if she could enter as she wants to talk about what happened earlier. Nonetheless, Bro hesitates for one second while staring at her as he has no clue on what to do, so Hojin just replies with uh, causing Daeyoung to activate her Tsundere abilities and yells at him that they can talk right here as well, and it'll be absolutely fine. Hojin then tries to make an excuse claiming that he's hesitant because his room is dirty and unclean right now, but Daeyoung tells him she doesn't care at all. But here's the thing man, Bro is just trying to save his crush from her demise due to Rin waiting in the background, but now it looks like he's getting cornered like a rat in New York City. Nevertheless, Daeyoung looks like a type of girl that has never received a no in her life, so she decides to use her skill, enlarge double Big Macs and proceeds to use them to press against our boy wanting to really talk. It was then, at this very moment, our boy knew he screwed up as he easily gets defeated by Daeyoung's chest plate that causes him to want to risk it all a second time. Luckily for Hojin though, he's able to snap back to reality and attempts to push Daeyoung away, but then Bro forgot about his powers so his devil fruit activates without him knowing. With his mythical fruit now in action, Daeyoung begins to stumble upon her words, unable to coherently string together a full sentence, so she ends up just mumbling um. At the same time, Rin decides to take a popping swing around Hojin's shoulder, taking a peek herself wondering what's taking so long. Our boy then panics when he realizes Rin is standing right behind him, but she unsuspectingly invites Daeyoung if she wants to talk whilst having no armor pants equipped. Coincidentally, at the sight of Rin wearing the attire of a girl that looks like they just got rice cakes smashed seconds before, Daeyoung ends up angrily squeezing her dragon skirt from the side, looking like she got hit by the jealous love bug. Suddenly, Daeyoung sighs out loud and tells our boy that she was expecting to spend some quality time with him after going through all the trouble of stalking him, but she's going to go on her way. Shortly after making her disappointed spiel, she frustratedly stomps away out of his apartment, making so much sound that all his neighbors from every floor is probably going to make a noise complaint. With Daeyoung now gone from the vicinity, the door slams close right in front of him, but we all know he's secretly crying inside after missing a major opportunity. Regardless, Hojin turns back around ready for round two of his devil versus human battle, so he ends up asking how the heck she's able to quickly transform into a human. Rin then pipes up looking more lively and nice than usual, where she explains to Hojin that she has a plan that could work to allow them both to peacefully coexist, and all Bro has to do is to do her job instead by extracting souls for her. Our boy then begins to sweat profusely as mere moments before she was about to end his Roblox career and now she seemingly wants to be his best friend so Hojin thinks this is just a prank bro. 
Regardless, Rin tells him that she noticed the sus way he looked at Daeyoung earlier since Bro is a mega sussy baka. So she knew right there and then that the marble would activate as his banana tree plantation was growing faster than usual. She then continues on and explains that her theory is that the marble's power must be connected to his emotions and not his physical proximity to a girl. As such, Rin points at his face and informs him that this is good news as he doesn't need to get clapped anymore, and we all know the marble's powers work as Daeyoung literally found out where he lived. Furthermore, Rin makes the great point of how Bro would never have been able to bag someone as pretty as Daeyoung, as he's totally out of her league, so this situation is a win-win scenario. Our boy gets to win over and date any girl he wants, allowing him to get out of his gaming misery and Rin can just go being chilling as she waits for him to give her souls. Of course, our boy instantly accepts her offer as it dawns on him that he can literally go and be the rice cake smashing hero he's always dreamt of, and now it's achievable all thanks to the devil fruit. Fast forward the next day, we find Hojin has eagerly gone to class, totally excited that he can go ahead and win over any 11 out of 10 he sees. However, Hojin starts falling asleep and starts to get sad when class continues on, and Daeyoung seems like she isn't going to show up to school today. Suddenly, as our boy continues to zone in and out of class, his teacher calls him out to start paying attention, but she ain't half bad herself. A long and grueling math class then finishes, so Hojin packs his bags and heads to his next class, but the teacher calls him up to go help her out since he wasn't paying attention in class. Now since it's clear that this boy rarely ever says no, he accepts so he starts wheeling out a bunch of exam materials with the teacher, but don't be fooled by this angle, as it's revealed the teach got some badonkadonks. Shortly after making it to her private office with no one around, she ends up blushing and asks if Hojin would love a part-time job with her, but for the first time ever, Bro says no. However, to not get punished for refusing her amazing job offer, Hojin turns around and examines a few of her awards to avoid her glare and to also compliment the teacher for her achievements. Nevertheless, with the two alone in the private room, my sussy senses are tingling especially when the teach starts pushing up her badonkadongs in front of our boy. Coincidentally, she makes a remark of how she's 34 now but she's never had any sort of fun and at the same time, Sussy Hojin begins to realize that the teach has been packing some large and unused badonkadonks and fresh bakery buns. So now with our boy transforming into his ultimate baker form, his devil fruit activates by covering him with a mysterious red aura, causing his teacher to accidentally get affected. Moments later, the two exit the room but before Hojin could head on his way, the teacher makes a comment of how she likes meat and offers to pay for dinner if he would like to come with her. And so the two teleport themselves to what looks like delicious Korean BBQ, where the teacher starts telling Hojin more hints about how she's super single and how unlucky she is in blind dating. However, the sussy turn tables turn again, when our boy tells her that personally he thinks she's super charming so bro is accidentally letting his riz leak causing her to be flustered. But then bro gets stuck in a sticky situation with some double bacon Big Macs in front of him parting ways like the Nile, as she asks him what parts of her he finds charming. But the funny part in all of this is he totally avoids her question, and just says that he's single too, and claims he knows she will meet someone decent in the future causing more of his aura to envelope her. Shortly after our boy's devil fruit activates again, Hojin gets ganked by her hand as the teach starts blurting out how cute she thinks he is, and how great he smells because she loves Mr. Spice. Suddenly, as bro blinks once, he finds himself teleported to someone's bed where he's absolutely shocked at what's unraveling before him as he fears having someone ride his bike to the point of no return. First, he couldn't handle Daeyoung slurping his vanilla ice cream, and now his teacher is about to send him into the sussy dimension as she's already unequipped all of her defensive armor. She doesn't stop there though as the teacher ultimately stares our boy down while she puts on the basic Minecraft skin of nothing as his powers were too strong to overcome. Meanwhile, Hojin is left totally perplexed as he never expected to check off his 2023 bingo card of getting better grades by rice cake destroying his teachers. Regardless, our boy gets flustered as his carnival hot dog almost exploded so much ketchup all over the teach due to her thoroughly handling it with care, so he tries his best to not become the infamous one pump man. Eventually, she hops on his mountain bike, ready to speed her way through to the climax of the nearby mountain. But she first makes a remark of how much she's loving everything before the rest was epic rap battles of history. And in less than four seconds from the start of her bike ride journey, his rocket ship explodes in multiple pieces, but the ship forgot to pull out, causing Hojin to look like he just saw the grudge. Luckily for him though, the teacher just smiles as she doesn't care about him finishing the race early, but she's a tad bit disappointed the show is already finished. Elsewhere back at our boy's apartment, Rin is busy tinkering around with human inventions like the sus pad that Hojin used to use to keep one hand busy and the other browsing. Nevertheless, Rin doesn't mind how dirty the screen is as she's low maintenance, 
but she uses it and successfully learns about the internet and all its wonders. One of the first things she does is look up food videos from the best ever food review show channel, causing her to constantly gush about all the tasty looking human foods. Eventually, Gullah, she gets carried away browsing the World Wide Web. She drops the sus pad to think about our boy, wondering if he's busy doing a good job with her task as she still needs some more Dark Souls in her life. Now back to the action with Hojin, we find out that Bro is laying there totally speechless as the Teach decides they need more than one round of intense racing. And so they continue round two as the moon illuminates the night sky, where by this time our boy is able to last more than a few seconds in their race. Moments later, after the volcano of Hojin abruptly erupts straight into the narrow valley of the Teacher, we learn that her name is actually June. Fast forward the next morning, June smacks a drooling Hojin awake as it's time for school, so the two get ready right before June wishes our boy a great day, where she also hopes that things won't be awkward between the two from now on. As such, Hojin quickly runs to the grocery and totally skips his first few classes, as Bro is absolutely famished from the night before. However, as our boy stumbles upon his trashed-up apartment with a disheveled Rin laying down right in the middle, he starts scolding her to clean up after herself. Unfortunately for him though, she totally ignores him and grabs his feet, begging our boy to bring her some McDonald's as she's craving a vanilla milkshake, but we all know that Machine is never ever up. Rin is now angry after figuring out that Zaddy Hojin couldn't even stop by the Wendy's on their block, especially since he had all the time in the world after not showing up yesterday. Now here's a secret. The key to every woman's heart is some food, but bro didn't bring any so now the jig is up. But the second best thing you can give them in anime is some mythical sus sus fruit attacks deep within their boat. But since bro is refusing to give Rin any of those two options right now, she realizes that he must have done the sussy with someone else last night catching Hojin by surprise. Regardless, a deal is a deal, so he must now hold up the end of his bargain for using her devil fruit to make June ride up and down on his roller coaster last night. With Rid now extracting some well-deserved energy from Hojin, who's now having a hard time stopping his banana sword from growing, Rin realizes that something feels totally off on this energy transfer. As such, Rin is forced to stop grinding energy levels from his C69 after discovering that her heart is beating abnormally fast and things are getting more soaked than a waterfall down below. After quickly making an excuse and pulling away to her room, Rin makes Hojin feel like he's looking like a 21 savage supervillain today, but he just shrugs it off like nothing ever happened. Nevertheless, Rin plops down on her bed to hide her face straight into her pillows, absolutely flustered as she knows the marble's effects are getting stronger by the day. To make matters worse for her, she can feel her feelings grow more and more for Hojin, but since she was just a trainee before the entire ordeal unfolded, her biggest fear is that she doesn't know how to rice cake smash. Fast forward to the next day back at school, our boy looks haggard after grinding all night on black fruits, so he accidentally bumps into Dayon without him even noticing. Unfortunately for him though, Dayon instantly hits him in the face after realizing that it was him since she can't control her feelings for him as it's weird for her. Bro basically got so much riz now that he doesn't even need to do anything for girls to fall for him since all it takes is one look from a girl to make them feel even more sussy for him. Nonetheless, to make it even between the two, Daeyoung buys and hands him a Korean milk drink from a nearby vending machine before heading off to class. However, as Daeyoung tries to escape the awkwardness filling the air, Hojin gets up to stop her and calls her back as he wants to clear up the misunderstanding from yesterday. But before he could even explain anything, Daeyoung continues to run away after telling him that there's no need to explain anything, as what happened between the two was just an accident. With Daeyoung now disappearing faster than my chocolate bars, Hojin is left in the dust wondering what went wrong, so he starts thinking that he knew that she was way far out of his league even with his devil fruit activated. Luckily, the sussy goddess of luck seems to be on Hojin's side for today, as Daeyoung discovers that her brand new class just happens to be the same one our boy got moved to. She then tries her best to contain any female primal urges of thinking about his banana-flavored ice cream cone, but it looks like it's too late. After class ends, Daeyoung decides to take the matters into her own hands by closing the door and telling Hojin to wait, since her packet of sauce is now primed and ready to be put in some limited edition spicy chicken tenders from Jollibee delivered by Hojin himself. Things escalate quickly when Daeyoung also locks the door behind her, where she proceeds to lock on and attack Hojin straight on, yelling at him that this is all his fault. She then orders him to take responsibility for her feeling like a supreme sussy baka due to the scent he's giving off, but bro is dumb as rocks since he can't figure out that the sussy turn tables have already turned towards him. So to make things quite clear for Hojin, Daeyoung decides to let her skirt rip like a Beyblade to allow our boy to discover what she really meant as now things are crystal clear. Regardless with Daeyoung taking the initiative, 
Hojin follows up by making her wish come true like a Jenny, but the only difference is that this Jenny is a sussy one, so he activates the sus technique of finding some weak spots to make Hojin super surprised. With the Fire Nation completing its direct attacks on Daeyong's waterfall, she realizes this isn't enough, so she ends up returning the favor by claiming Hojin's banana tree. This time, Daeyong's invasion on Hojin proves to be much more effective and quick, quicker than the entire art dissolving into lower quality and more and more blurry. Eventually, Daeyong's intense ganks on his volcano lead to Hojin accidentally becoming an active volcano rather than be a dormant one, so it explodes uncontrollably like Mount Vesuvius. Just as Dayon fought their entire Tekken duel is now over since Bro spilled the milk, she gets overwhelmed by Hojin's scent after witnessing firsthand that his street fighter was ready for round 2. As such, their brand new round starts with Dayon wanting to be Chun-Li only for her to be stuck in battle position, waiting for Hojin to enter her battlefield for the first ever time. This catches our boy by surprise as he never expected for his dreams to finally come true, so he stands there stun-locked, unable to believe what the heck is happening. Mere seconds later, Daeyong experienced what it's like for a Hojin's nether dragon to enter her realm of no return, and let's just say she almost got reincarnated into another world. Regardless, after finishing up their ultimate Smash Bros 1 vs 1 where Hojin was victorious with three stocks up, they end up finishing and leave their university room together while acting like nothing happened. However, Daeyong is the first one to speak up whilst twirling her hair, so she asks Hojin if he wants to go eat out even after he got full from her earlier. Unfortunately for the two, right before Hojin could say anything, the two get randomly ganked by teacher Jun getting ready for her next class, so she gets suspicious of the two. With neither Hojin or Daeyong saying anything, Jun begins to tease Hojin as he might as well be named July after seeing how his face is burning more hot than the summer months as he does not know what to do when two prize girls collide. So with Daeyong and Hojin still unable to respond or say anything to Jun, the teacher changes the conversation topic and warns Daeyong that her perfect attendance record is in danger due to her needing to skip class for model work. Since this won't do for Jun, she scolds her while trying to take away Hojin, so she ends up giving Daeyong homework to bring to the next class to help her raise her grades. Nonetheless, Jun fully latches onto Hojin like a jealous girlfriend, claiming that Hojin apparently agreed to help her with something today, so she orders Daeyong to go home and to finish her assignment as soon as possible. And so a disappointed Daeyong heads home giving Jun and Hojin the perfect opportunity to be alone. But Bro never expected that Jun would show up out of nowhere only for her to push him into a random room. But before my sussy senses could fully activate, Teacher Jun is revealed to be a menace as she instantly closes the door behind them, only for her hands to directly charge and capture his subway footlong. A few moments later, Hojin finds himself in a predicament as he doesn't know if he even has enough power within him to start the third round. But it doesn't matter since Jun has a firm grip of his situation. Within seconds of Jun using her special Double Dragon's attack to fully engulf the banana tree in front of her, his McDonald's milk machine explodes again. But this time it still looks like it's got enough for just one more vanilla milkshake. However, this time he wants to teach Jun a lesson for interrupting his time with Daeyong. So he summons his blue eyes white behemoth to absolutely destroy her deck. Success, it works. His fourth round today gave him a tremendous victory over Jun, as she could not overcome his blue eyes white behemoth even when trying to block using her dark magician girl skills as she never expected in her entire lifetime to be dismantled like a noob. Bro then continues on invading Jun's homeland all afternoon without a single spill from his unlimited drink machine, and only when he wanted to stop did the sun finally set. After putting Jun in her rightful place, nightfall came quickly so Hojin rushed home after remembering he might miss his raid day today, and there's no way he would forgive himself for missing a raid day. But before he could hop on Discord to hit up the raid, he discovers that Rin has totally settled into the human realm, since she already started to seal his clothes. After finishing up his raid and not getting any rare drops he needed to become stronger in game, he pleads with Rin to let him sleep in peace on his bed today as he's too tired from all the legendary rice cakes smashing he has done. But Rin is a straight-up savage, so she says no and declines his offer, making our boy totally speechless, since this is his house in the first place. With no energy left in him to fight back versus Rin, he decides to just ignore her so he rightfully falls down in his bed, totally exhausted from all volcano eruptions. After retaking half of the bed space from Rin, she ends up asking how much rice cake destroying he's been doing today to make him this tired, plus, she can smell a lot of people on him today. Rin is hot-tempered so she starts shaking Hojin uncontrollably to make sure he doesn't fall asleep, telling him that if he passes out then she will literally get evaporated like condensed milk. As such, 
She flips him over with superhuman strength only to activate her forbidden sussy jutsu on him by jumping on top to make sure he's wide awake like Katy Perry. In an instant, Bro's little Hojin woke up faster than Usain Bolt since he never expected Rin to attack with such intensity using her original VM Bakery. She then starts yelling at him to stay still, as it's time for her to extract some energy but Hojin can't help himself as his banana tree plantation is growing bigger by the second. Unfortunately for these two, right before they got to experience their sussy action scene, the doorbell rings but neither of them were expecting a visit at this time of the night. Upon further investigation, the two discover that there was a note left behind the door, with no one nearby to be seen or even heard. What's even weirder is that the note that was left behind contained nothing on it, leaving both Hojin and Rin perplexed as they have no idea what this means. After waiting another minute to see if anyone would come by, Hojin closes the door and ends up placing the blame on Rin, telling her that it's all her fault for being noisy all the time. Rin quickly fires back and points the blame back on Hojin, reminding him that they made a promise that he would be the sussy master now in return for him giving her energy. With Rin speaking facts, Hojin finally agrees to let her siphon off some energy so the two face off against each other, looking like this is some UFC pre-fight press conference, but the only difference is that the sussy meters is off the charts. And so she finally grabs some energy after a long day, but Rin decides to only take a little bit as she doesn't want him to get knocked out like last time. So now it looks like Rin has totally fallen for him, and it's all thanks to her very own devil fruit that got stuck within our boy. Fast forward to later on in the night with Hojin fast asleep after grinding out some levels on C3, we find Rin unable to sleep since she didn't take enough energy. With her putting Hojin first before herself, she has to pay the price for her love sacrifice, so the only thing she can do is rummage around the fridge in the kitchen. But nothing fancies her as human food is not on the same level as demon energy, so she decides to gank Hojin looking like she wants to join the All-Stars backstabbing group. However, instead of ending Bro once and for all so she could get her powers back, she ends up wondering about rice cake smashing and whether or not that activity really do be banging. Eventually, all restraints are taken off as Rin evolves back into a supreme sussy Becca, so she steals a couple Hershey kisses, and somehow Bro is still fast asleep. This time though, a couple stolen ones weren't enough, so Rin looks like she lost to the Fire Nation so she begins staring at Hojin while playing with her playground by herself all alone. After a couple minutes, the wooden floor gets soaked due to the river Rin made by playing on her swings like it's a super durable joystick, but it's still not enough so she goes for the fresh salami in the aisle in front. Finally, Hojin wakes up after Rin got stuck on his zipper, so he ends up catching her red-handed and makes an annoyed face, but let's be real, Deep inside, Bro is loving every moment of this as what kind of man wouldn't say no here. Regardless, much to everyone's surprise, Rin decided to double down here like a madman so she whips out her double bay blades out in the open, while hopping back on his roller coaster. Unfortunately for her, Bro just lays there like a starfish and stares at her, while trying to look like he would rather play Roblox right now, but his enlarged Costco hot dog begs to differ. Rin then gets flustered as she doesn't want to directly tell him to put his tower inside her Eiffel, so she tries her best to not mention rice cake, destroying straight up. Eventually, Bro gets the hint that she wants to place his patty in between both her fresh buns, so Hojin Uno reverse cards her by flipping her back. Now in prime position to get the show on the road, Hojin starts activating sussy spells like instantly removing the top lid of her instant noodles to reveal the milk jugs hiding behind. Mere moments later, after successfully extracting some fresh milk and letting her ocean free down below, Bro gets serious as it's time for phase two of their battle. With phase two of their duel now underway, Rin looks like she's ascended into the sussy realm as she could have never imagined how amazing rice cake destroying is, but she better brace herself as the real phase is finally on the horizon. Eventually, Rin decides to stop the duel for a second, as she wants to pay him back a favor, only for her to accidentally bite the hot dog. Hojin doesn't mind as he knows it's her first time experiencing a chili hot dog, so he just tells her to be more careful next time and helps guide her like a true professor from Harvard. Time then passes by, and the next thing we know, the two Fortnite players are ready for the final round as Hojin looks like he's about to send his battering ram to the final stretch of her battlefield. Upon the siege equipment entering the promised land of Rin all the way in, she finally realizes why everyone is always loving some Korean rice cakes as she can't help but be spicy. Anyways, the chili hot dog was so good that Rin ends up revealing to Hojin that if he's able to master the devil fruit within him, then he can really make sure the person he chooses to fall in love with be totally satisfied with his rice cake efforts. So all he needs to do is to continue collecting energy from any girl possible to make him stronger, just like in Naruto. Nonetheless, the two pass out together as Rin didn't expect to get her ankles broken over and over, and Hojin is absolutely gassed after bagging three counts in one day. Fast forward a few days later, we find Hojin back at school, 
but he's got a problem now after breaching the gates of Rin the other night since things are very awkward now. Every time he comes back home to his own apartment, Rin will either hide or randomly throw things at him with perfect precision like Otani to make him go away as she can't believe she jumped on his active volcano. It's not like she's the only one that's embarrassed about the situation since our boy is feeling the same way, but he can't even grind in peace as Rin is acting like a diva main. With Hojin now scared to go home after school, due to all the awkwardness filling the air, he goes on Reddit to take his mind off things, but he suddenly gets an unexpected message. It's then revealed that a wild Daeon has popped up in his DMs, giving our boy short notice to meet up, but she's already wearing a choker, so some of my sussy senses have begun tingling over here. It turns out that Miss Sundir is shooting her shot by acting like she needs help for an assignment, even though she's already a top student and Hojin is like bottom two. So this is basically a huge hint that Daeon just baited him hook, line, and sinker for some quality time, but our aloof Hojin tries his best to teach her anyways. As Hojin attempts his best to explain the assignment they were tasked to do, Daeon is distracted by her true colors, as she stares and begins to wonder why Hojin isn't trying to destroy her bakery right now, as most guys can't resist the urge. Unfortunately for Hojin, he hasn't really figured out what to do yet since he likes to procrastinate last minute like me, but Daeon doesn't care as she's busy staring into his soul. Eventually, the turntables turn, so Daeyoung is the one that teaches him what to do. So Bro decides to go home, ready to spam some ranked games, but he gets stopped in his tracks last second by an angry Daeyoung. She tells him to stop being dense like Rock Lee, so she lets him know that she clearly never wanted to study, and it was all an excuse so they could be up. As such, Daeyoung buys him some food, but she starts angrily yelling for him to not get the wrong idea as a popular girl like her would never want to do the tango with a sore loser like him. So like a true gentleman, Hojin agrees with her claiming that it was just all the misunderstanding that night, but then she gets even more mad as she can't make up her mind so now Bro is stuck in an unwinnable battle with what seems like an ex-girlfriend. To make matters worse for our boy as he's stuck there forced to listen to Daeyoung go on and on about that fateful night, she ends up accidentally falling asleep mid-conversation as she drank too much mango bubble tea. So like a real man, he accompanies her home to make sure she got there safe, but the turntables turn as the home address she gave him turned out to be a motel instead of her real house. After arriving at their destination, Bro can't believe that she somehow booked a motel and planned the entire thing the day before, so like a savage, Daeyoung tells him that this is their house now. Shortly after, she quickly wakes up, but a mysterious red mist is busy clouding her brain space, causing her to remember that she can't hold back anymore after waiting this long since her last banana sword appointment. As such, Hojin freaks out as he can't believe that the marble is still working on someone like Daeon even though it's been a few days, so it gets a little bit too excited. Fast forward a few hours later, and disheveled Daeon comes back to life looking like she just got rocked by a meteor, but now she's busy trying her best to remember what happened as she doesn't know where she is. After taking a moment to piece things together, she looks down and wonders why her default Minecraft skin is on and why all her clothes are invisible. With the air giving some unexpected chills on her exposed twin and dragons, she covers up using her hands, but she finally notices Hojin with the corner of her eye looking like he just finished some Zoom calls with no pants. Nevertheless, Daeyoung freaks out since the sight of our bro caused her all her memories to come rushing back, so she's unable to believe she tried so hard to bag Hojin's Italian salami. As such, she frantically rushes to the bathroom mirror faster than dream being cancelled, holding her face in disbelief for stooping so low. Eventually, she came to her senses and comes out to apologize for showing Bro her bad side, but her mind is still filled with wanting to climb his banana tree. Luckily for her though, Hojin is the master supreme sussy backa, so he tells her that he didn't mind having to watch over her the past few hours. But it's now time for him to head home as he gotta use his mythical dragon fruit to clap some noobs. However, just as Bro tries to put back on his legendary chess piece to go home, Daeyoung reaches for his hand and tells him to wait whilst looking like something has taken hold of her. The red mist begins to engulf him again, so she ends up confessing that she never made a mistake in the first place due to his scent, so Daeyoung ends up pushing him bedside while Bro looks like he just wants to grind back home. Mere seconds later, she rips apart her bathrobe like a menace in front of Hojin and prepares to board the cruise ship called Hojin's Banana, catching our boy by surprise. With the red mist now moving to fully take over Daeyoung, she tells him that all this time she's been thinking of him ever since that one day, so she goes and grabs the Hojin Jr. down below. But with his plate legs in the way, she stares back into his soul and rips apart his new brand new Prada pants wanting to show him how her Slurpee machine has evolved, revealing to us that Hojin didn't take advantage earlier. In the end, she was powerful on his banana tree plantation trying to catch him at all costs, so she successfully hops on his banana tree plantation. 
Regardless, with Dayan on her continuous attack wanting Hojin to succumb to defeat at all costs, Ro decides to show her what a true demon is like by grabbing her hand and telling her to hold on the best she can as it's time to rumble in the jungle.